Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch. I hope you're doing really well. And today I'm going to review a product by a company called Makey. And I've been using products by this company for a long time and I've been mispronouncing their name. This is the Makey MK320 Flash, which I've been using for well over a year for macro photography. But I've been calling it the Mikey MK320 Flash, but it's pronounced Makey. But they contacted me and asked me to review a product. And a lot of times when I'm asked to review a product, I'm not all that excited about it, but this time I'm very excited about it. This is the Makey 60 millimeter f2.8 macro lens that I'm gonna be taking a look at today. It's designed for APS-C cameras, and I'm gonna be testing out the Nikon Z version, but they make this for uh, Nikon Z, Canon M, Canon R, Sony E, Fuji X, and Micro Four Thirds mounts. So it's available for just about everything you can think of. Very excited to try this out. Let's see what it looks like on the Z50. I've already taken it out of the box and put it on the Z50. Look how small this package is. The Z50 is a small camera. This 60 millimeter 2.8 macro lens is small and they combine to be nice and light. And you know, most of the time for macro photography, you're, you're doing manual focus anyway. So the fact that this lens is a manual focus lens doesn't slow you down at all. So you would set this thing at one to one or however much magnification you want and move the camera back and forth. That's pretty much how you always do up close macro photography. And the fact that this camera and lens combination is so light will make getting that in focus and not having your hand start to shake after you've held it for a while, um, it'll make that much, much easier. I'm really excited about this combination. Let's see what it looks like. It has a plastic front lens cap uh, that just sticks on. It just kind of is held on by air pressure maybe, um, which that's kind of unusual. It doesn't screw on, but it doesn't fall off either. So that's good. Let's take that off and set it over there. Uh, this, is the, this is the focus ring, this first ring closer to the camera body. And it has a nice long throw, which is good for manual focus. Uh, you want to be able to just move it just the tiniest amount and do just tiny critical focus adjustments. So a long throw is good for manual focus lens and it is buttery, buttery smooth. It feels great. This lens feels like it's made almost completely out of metal. So that's really nice. Uh, the next ring, and it's further away from the body, is the aperture ring. And it's clickless, which I don't like. I'd rather it be clicked. Some people prefer a clickless aperture ring. Uh, some people don't. I'm in the category that doesn't. But it does feel nice and buttery smooth, but I almost wish it had a little bit more resistance because I'm gonna, when I do macro photography, I put a bonnet diffuser on the front of the lens to, uh, to make the flash, which I'll be using the MK320 and that'll diffuse the light coming out of the flash and make the, the light on the subject much more beautiful. And I worry that my bonnet diffuser is gonna make it difficult to, um, to see what aperture I'm at, first of all, and second of all, to, uh, it'll make it difficult to adjust my aperture because I'll have to remove the bonnet. We'll see how that works out. Um, but I'm very excited about this product and I'm gonna get started shooting with it right now. Here's my first shot of the day that I was happy with. This is a small milkweed bug, and this thing is probably three or four millimeters long at the most. It is absolutely tiny. So this was at one to one, and I cropped it a fair amount as well. I'm here now at my favorite little garden at Harrison Bay State Park, and I put my bonnet diffuser on, and it's designed for a much larger lens, so it just kind of slips on, which is bad because I have to hold it with my finger, but it's good because it doesn't bump into the aperture ring or the focus ring and move it. And I'm able to control the focus ring. I've started out working on these flowers, which is my favorite, like I mentioned, uh, micro photography location. And there's a, a little Katie did right here, um, but I'm having to shoot it not quite at one-to-one. -one. I can't get the whole, almost said bird, I can't get the whole insect in the frame at one-to-one. -one, so I'm backing it up just a little bit turning my aperture to about f16. I'm at 1 200th ISO 160, and I'm using just a little bit less than one quarter power on the flash. These are fascinating looking little creatures. I love to find these. Oh, I got a sharp one. I've learned from great 
macro photographers like Michael Waddell from Sweden that you don't have to feel bad about not getting every one of your shots in focus. As a matter of fact, I think Michael said maybe only 10 or 15% of his shots when working this way are in focus. And uh, that'll make you feel a lot better because you're gonna miss a lot doing manual focus when the, the depth of field is razor thin. But I'm gonna keep working on this Katie did. I'm gonna back my focus up a little more. I'm still having trouble getting the whole thing in the frame. It's, it's small, but it's, you can't count in its antenna and everything, it's probably an inch long. I love that it's patient because I've made many shots. I made many shots even before I started recording this video clip. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Here is the Katie did that I made. You actually watched me make this photo just now in that previous video clip. The Katie did is such an amazing looking little creature. I love to photograph these. And I always come to this location because it has lots and lots of large milkweed bugs. I love to photograph these and they are fantastic. But here is a small milkweed bug, another shot of a small milkweed bug. There were just a few of these there and these are so tiny and so hard to photograph. I shifted gears a little bit and made a photograph of this young leaf with an adult version of the same kind of leaf in the background. I thought that turned out really cool. I was looking around for some more insects. I went back to the flowers and shot another large milkweed bug, but look, there's also a pollen covered green bee in this shot, so that's pretty cool. Next up, it's another milkweed bug on one of these small sunflower blooms there in this garden that I do love so much. It's great to have this resource for macro photography so close to my house. And here is one of the sunflowers that's not quite blooming yet. I love to make photos of young, not completely mature blooms. Now I've got a couple more shots of the green bee with all the pollen on it. This thing was really cool. I'm not sure how many of these I saw, but I made photographs whenever I could. And these are some of the better ones of my attempts to photograph the green bee with the pollen all over its legs. Just look at all that pollen on this bug. Here's some large milkweed bugs. The last time I shot at this garden, every one I found almost was mating, but this was the only pair that I photographed mating this time. Next up, over at the garbage can, I photographed this ant that was in the garbage near the little garden. I saw a lot of ants, but they're hard to get a shot of because they're usually moving. They don't sit still very much. This was some really small fruit on one of the trees near the garden and I tried to make a photograph of it. I don't know exactly what kind of tree this is. I walked down the trail a little ways and found this spider on this leaf and made this photograph of it hanging upside down from its web just over the leaf. And then I came back to the garden and photographed yet another large milkweed bug. Love the colors of these and I love that they're fairly easy to photograph, especially if there's a lot of them. This is probably my favorite large milkweed bug shot of the day got it on one of the stems of the sunflowers. And then after this, I left and came home and I took the flash off. All the previous shots had flash. I made this shot, I stopped it, or I opened it up to F4 just to see what the bokeh would look like photographing at my Xenia garden. And then this is another shot with no flash. There was full sun and I got this fly on the little fence right by our Xenia garden. And then I called it a day. Well, that was a fun morning of doing macro photography. I really enjoyed using the Make 60 millimeter 2.8. What a bargain this thing is. I'll put the price on the screen. I don't have it memorized, but I know it's inexpensive and it works perfectly fine. And I think sharpness and uh, image quality is fine with it. And like I say, most of the time you're doing manual focus anyway with macro photography. So it's quite a bargain. I enjoyed using it. I did occasionally bump the aperture like I worried that I might if I was making a shot and it looked like it would be darker than the shots that I had been making previously I could be pretty sure that I've knocked my aperture smaller and if I'm making a shot and it all of a sudden is brighter than my previous shots I could be pretty sure that I had knocked the aperture more wide open. I shot most of the time at f16 which seemed to be working really good. Uh, I was scared to go to f22 because I was worried about diffraction and probably had some diffraction at F16, but I think the shots came out fine. This diffuser that I use on my, on my much larger 100 millimeter Canon macro lens, I had to just hold it with my fingers 
and uh, let it lean way forward like that as it should. And it worked really well. As a matter of fact, some of the time, because I'm a little bit closer and the flash is a little bit closer to my subject than it is with my other macro setup, I was able to use the flash at a little bit less power. Uh, usually I use one quarter power and I was using one third or two thirds of a stop less flash than a quarter power almost all the way another third of a stop would be one eighth power so all in all i'm going to recommend this lens i think it's really cool especially if you're on a budget i, I can't imagine anything better for this amount of money for macro photography and i think uh, hopefully you enjoyed the results that i was able to get with it and hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did a thumbs up is always appreciated if you want to see more stuff like this subscribe and hit the notification bell. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.